So while you are fulfilled and significant and blessed and elevated and you, 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 you find your place in life, in society, when you run with God and run towards God, here are the things that happen when you run away from God like Jonah did. Running from my mission causes bad consequences. Say that with me. Running from my mission causes bad consequences. Do you believe that? I mean, you, even as parents, we know that if your child is really doing something bad, you know that something bad will happen to them. You, 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 you can say, well, you say, son, daughter, I know you're trying to live life and you're grown and you can do your own things, but these choices that you're making is going to end up bad in your life. You can say that, right? Because you know, you know that just, just, just physically, logically, just yeah, it's not going to work out right. How much more God? When I run away from what God created me for because he has wired me, I am his masterpiece. A toaster, a toaster lifts his mission when it is being used by, to toast the bread. Right? You say, I want to cook, I want to cook soup on my toaster. What's going to happen to you? I want to use my lawnmower to be able to vacuum my carpet. What's going to happen? <laughs> You'll be crying. Right? I'm going to put water inside of my fuel tank. Water is great, but for the wrong purpose, right? It's terrible. It will crash your engine. <laughs> And so my brother and my sister, when we run with God, when we run behind God in lockstep with God, great things happen. But when we run away from God trying to mind our own business, there is what? Bad consequences. There is what? Terrible consequences that happens. You say this is a free country. I can do whatever I want to. See, the greatest gift that God has given you and I is a freedom of choice. Do you believe that? But you see, once you exercise that choice, you are no longer free. Let me give you an example. You have freedom of choice to climb up on this building. You have freedom of choice to jump down on this building. But the minute you jump, you are no longer free. There's something called loss of gravity. Now it takes over. Your freedom ends when you exercise your choice. So choices have what? Consequences. Do you believe that? Tell yourself, tell your kids that, tell your grandchildren that. He says, you have to, you can do whatever you want to. You can say, I'm going to walk on the street all naked. You can do that. God is not going to stop you. But the minute you do that, guess what? There's going to be a bunch of photographs that are showing up on social media. <laughs> You're not going to like that. Children, your grandchildren may not like that. Right? Family members are saying, what's, what's wrong with you? Should we take you over to, to somewhere to help you out? Because I don't think this is the right behavior. So freedom of choice, the minute you exercise that free choice, you're not free anymore. And so God is saying you can choose to do whatever you want to, but guess what? If you run towards me, blessings will come. I will equip you to fulfill your life mission. If you run away from me, bad things will happen. So let's briefly look at some of the bad things that will happen. Through the experience, life experience of Jonah, number one, if I run from God, my life will go downhill. Do you believe that? <laughs> Does anyone believe this? As simple as the sun, we all need to hear that, right? So every now and then we think we're doing the right thing, and it's like we, we feel like it's cool, nobody knows about it. And, uh, but if you are, today, if you are doing anything outside of the will of God, that God doesn't approve of, your life will be going downhill from that. Running from God is always on a slide. It's always degrading. It's always downhill. You are heading down over and over again. There's an important word that you see throughout the book of Jonah as we stated that is the word down, D-O-W-N. Let's pick, let's pick up one of those. Look at verse 3, the second part of Jonah. Jonah 1, 3. And I smashed together New King James, New Living Translation, New Century together. Read that with me. He, Jonah, went down to the city of Joppa where he found a ship that was going to the opposite direction, the city of Tarshish. Jonah paid for the trip, went down below the deck aboard, planning to go to run away from the Lord. So it's like, I want to go down to another city. He goes down to the bottom of the deck 
<laughs> and says, God's never going to find me over here. I'm done with God. Right? Now look at verse 5. Next, next verse, verse 5. Note the word down. So Jonah had gone where? Down into the lowest part of the ship, laid down, and was fast asleep. You see, the, the, the Bible is particular with words. God is so funny, so interesting. He, sometimes God gets very poetic. You see, down, 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 down. It's not just down. God is saying, listen, listen, listen. If you run away from me, you are going where? Down, 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 down. Then in Jonah 2, 3, you know what happened. There was a big storm in. The people said, this is, this, is, this is not right. This storm we haven't seen before. We, we've got sailors for years, for centuries. This storm looks like there is something, there's some evil involved in them. Somebody must have done something wrong. The gods may be mad at us, Right? It's like something is happening in your life and you feel like there's a satanic opposition going on and you're saying this is not just ordinary stuff. What has happened in my life, my family, my job, my finances, my health? There's got to be some, some spiritual opposition going on. So the sellers, the sellers, there is some spiritual thing going on in this. So Jonah owns up and says, look, it's me. I'm running away from God. And so this, this storm is not going to stop until you throw me into the water. Look at do three. But later it says what? They threw him in the water, and what happened? She just, she just note the word down also. I sank what? Down and down into the deep sea. And in verse 6, look at verse 6, Jonah 2, 6. Here's Jonah. He's speaking in the belly of the fish. He says, I was as far down. So you, you get the message that when you are running away from God, what's happening to your life? You're going where? Up? You're going where? <laughs> if you don't get anything in this message, when you walk out of here, it says, yes. That's the Mike's central message. My takeaway is when I'm running away from God, I'm going down, 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 down. But when I'm running towards God or with God, I'm going where? Up, up. You, do you get the message? Sometimes the Bible just speaks so, so literally to us. Running from God is all downhill. Now look at this. So to run from God, my brother, my sister, Satan is ready to embrace you in the arms. He says, you, you, you run from God? Well, here am I. You see, you don't have to run into Satan's arms. You don't have to run with Satan. He's, all, he's always looking for you. You see, when you are with God, Satan can have you. But when you run away from God, there's no middle ground. God says you can't serve two masters. So today you are either running with God or what? Running with who? Satan. His, his is automatic. His is automatic. His, that's the default. Naturally, Satan wants to have you. He comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. He wants to mess your life, your finances, your family, everything. So if I, if I, the bad consequence, number one that happens when I get away from God is my life is going downhill. Secondly, also, secondly, here's the negative consequence. If I run from God, it's going to cost me. If I run from God, it's going to cost me. Does anyone believe that? <laughs> you pay a higher price when you're trying to live life on your own. I mean, problems from nowhere start hitting you left and right. I mean, it's like you call, you, there's so much disaster will happen to you. The life of safety and blessing is with God. The life of trouble is away from God. Does anyone believe that? You are insulated from needless worry and pain and headache when you're trying to live outside of God. So look at what happened to Jonah. <laughs> jo jo um, Jonah 1 3. It says, What? Jonah did what? Paid the price to set to Tashis. Now, God told him to go to Nineveh. Do you think that God would have found a way to get him to Nineveh? If God had told him to go to Nineveh and he followed through, God would have found him there. Because when God asks you to do something, he will provide the means, the resources to be able to help you. Amen. But now he had to dig into his pocket and what? Pull money to pay people to go to a city and the same people turn around and threw him right there. In the There's always a price tag from running from God. It's going to cost you, my brother, my sister, to run from God. But it's going to cost you less. To run with God in God's direction. There is an emotional price to pay when you run away from God. Do you believe that? Headache, worry, tears, crying, pain, shame, regret. Hello? Emotional price tag. Is, is anyone hearing me? There is a physical price tag. How many of you have, have spent so much money trying to clean up your own mess? If you just didn't do it in the first place, we'd be a fell ahead in life. I should raise both hands up. <laughs> I should raise both hands up. There is a financial price tag when you run away from God. There's a spiritual price tag when you run away. It always costs more to run away from God. 
You see, Nineveh, Nineveh, when God told him to go over there, it's in the east. But instead, he decides to go far west. Nineveh was about 550 miles away from Jerusalem. Tarshish, where he, he's going in the opposite direction, is what? 2,500 miles away from where God told him. That says you go right here, short distance. You want to go all the way over there. Really? You want to take a long cut when God says go right here? That's what happens. When you, are, when, you, when you walk away from God, it takes longer. It takes harder. You have problems. You have headaches. You are kicking bricks into your own path. I mean, I'm not just preaching to myself. Amen. So it, 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 it's, it's going to cost you. <laughs> Let me throw in this one. If I run from God, God will oppose me. How many of you have won? I mean, fighting against God. God will oppose me. You say, why does God oppose you? Because God loves you. He created you for a purpose. He has a mission that only you can do. He wants you to be happy, fulfilled, and satisfied. He wants you to leave a legacy behind it. Even when you are in heaven, you look back at your life and you'll be happy that your time spent here on earth, you did it for your good and the glory of Almighty God. And so it's, it's, it will pain God to watch you Go down here with your life that God will want to stop you. Right? As a father, if your young child is trying to hurt themselves, are you going to just watch them? You love your child enough, you're going to try to catch them. Right? You're going to tell them, stop. This is going to harm you. So God will oppose us when we run away from him. That's what a loving father does. We sing a song here, that is who you are. You are a good, good father. That's what good parents do. They don't watch their, their loving children go astray. You try to intervene, don't you? Even when they are slamming the door on your face, you tell them, I'll be so happy if you do this. It will, will work well for you if you take this path. Right? And at any opportunity, sometimes they may hate you, they may not like you, but you are still in them trying to look for multiple ways to stay engaged and connected with them because you want to help them. God intervention in our lives, oh, he will put things to try to oppose us so we don't wreck our lives. So we see in Jonah 1, for what did God do? Did he stay silent in heaven while Jonah was out there twirling in the water? He said, Jonah, you're going to waste your time in Tarshish. I created you here for a purpose. And so the Lord sent what? A violent wind over the sea. Do you see that? (laughs) The Lord sent a violent opposing wind because God loves Jonah. Somebody had a sound of my voice. God has sent an opposing wind in your life because you're going the wrong way and God is trying to stop you. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. He is trying to do what? Stop you from messing up your own life. And you and I ought to be thankful for the many ways that God stopped us from wrecking our own lives. From taking a bad move, from pursuing something reckless in our lives. Hello! I look back at my life and I thank God many times that some of the pathways that I wanted to go, some of the jobs that I wanted to work for, man, I wanted to work so bad for a company and I tried so hard. I told people to give me a referral and to call decision makers and so forth and so on. I didn't get a job. Three months later, I found out that a whole department had been laid off. Laid off. God, thank you for not giving me that job. God, thank you. <laughs> that all my efforts were in vain. How many people I called who I knew could have leverage, knew the hiring managers and could put in a good word for me, who said, oh, Mike, I called them and uh, I think you're going to get it. Just show up at the interview, dress well, don't say anything bad and, and, and everything is fine. You're going to get a job. And I prayed and fasted, I prayed and fasted, believe God's word. And God says, no, if I let you have that job in three months, you will be jobless. You will lose the job that you currently have that I've blessed you with. Sometimes the Lord, the Lord, because he loves us so much, when we are going outside of his will, he will stop us, he will oppose us. Because God knows better for us than you do. Do you believe that? If I run from God, I'm going to go down hell. If I run from God, it's going to cost me. If I run from God, God's going to send an opposing wind. And let me give you a last one. If I run from God, it's going to hurt other people too. How many of you believe that? That when you are not doing what's right, 
when you are not living your life mission, it's not you that you are robbing of your potential, of your blessing, but you are robbing others too. Do you believe that? Because God sent you here not to live on you. God sent you here to bless you so you can bless others. Your life ought to be a benefit to others. And so when you are not living your life mission that will be a blessing to you, then others are being robbed. Others are being cheated. Is, is that pretty clear to everyone? So if I run from God, other people will get hurt. It may be your spouse. There are wives that are being hurt by husbands who are running from God. There are men, husbands that are being hurt because their wives are not doing what God wants them to do. There are kids that are being hurt and robbed of God's blessing. Maybe you and I and others were robbed because our ancestors never followed the way of the Lord. And so the blessings that ought to come our way, it never came our way. And God had to do a second act in us to get us back on track. If somebody believes that, say amen to that. I should raise both hands that God had to do a second act. <laughs> amen. Because I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. And perhaps somewhere along the line, somebody, somebody didn't stick with God and followed your life mission. And therefore, that inheritance wasn't passed on. But don't let it be you. Don't let it be who? Be you. So that others were hurt. Now, let, 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 just look at that in Jonah's account. Look at Jonah 1.4. So, so Jonah was out there running away from God. But look at what happened. It says the storm was so powerful that the ship was in danger of breaking up. The word is danger, right? So you got all these sailors who were in there also in danger, isn't that? Because of one man, right? So you could be the person in your family that's bringing trouble to that family. Hello? Is God speaking to somebody? You could be on the person on that job that's causing the job, the team not to progress. You could be the person in that church, in that community, in the family that is causing problems to happen because you are not living life according to God's mission for your life. The storm was so powerful that God said, I'm going to stop you, and now others are feeling the heat. Hello? Everybody's life is now being threatened because of the disobedience and the disloyalty and the unfaithfulness of one man who says, I'm not going to do what God wants me to do. I'm going to mind my own business. Now let's follow the story. Look at 1.5, Jonah 1.5. Let's catch, catch. So here's everybody on the ship now. What's happening to them? They were what? Fearing for their, what did they do to fear for their, for their own lives? Jonah did it, right? Who, who, who did it? <laughs> now everybody's afraid of their own life. So you see how just running away from God, living outside of God can bring heat to people who are just trying to live. He said, this is a business, oh. We are running our shipping business. And you came in and paid us a small fee. Now we are afraid of our own lives. Not only are they afraid of your lives, it says what? The desperate sailors were shouting to their gods. These are pagan gods. We're going to die. We're going to die. They are calling every god, little god, little god that they know. The ancestors who are even dead, they are calling upon them. Why? Why? It doesn't stop there. The ship is about to sink. So guess what? They are throwing their cargo away, throwing the food away. You, for anyone who's been in a ship, you know a ship has a lot of stuff to stabilize the ship. You're throwing machinery away, throwing equipment away, throwing clothes away. Whose fault is all this? One man. <laughs> and, and, and guess what that one man is doing? Now, Jonah had gone where? Below the deck and lying there, sound asleep. Sometimes you find the family, the people who are causing most problems are just out there living it out while others are struggling. Right? And here's what's happening. So all the sailors were terrified. They cried out in desperation. The storm is coming in. They started throwing things away and so forth and so on. And there's a lesson here in also. A lesson in also. You see, many times when we are in trouble, instead of coming to God, we throw away valuable things in life. You see, walking away from God costs you something valuable. You start throwing away valuable relationships. And so the people, you need to be with them to help you, to encourage you, so that you can follow their lifestyle. You don't want to be with them anymore. Hello? 
He said, if I go visit Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so because they are trying to treat each other so well, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go to my single friends and hang out with them. Because birds of the same feathers flock. So if you go somewhere, something will rob off you. You don't want to change your life. And so you start not hanging out. And so you see people don't come to church anymore. Because when they come to church, they're going to hear a message like this. So that all of us will go back and say, you know what? I I need to start asking a little bit better. They start praying. They start reading their Bible. They start calling on God. They start hanging around believers. Because when I come around Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike is uh, going to, how how are things going at home? I don't want to talk about how things are going at home. (laughs) So therefore, I'm going to dodge Pastor Mike. So we start throwing away valuable relationships. We start throwing away the values that we have. We start throwing away the habits that we know are right in our lives. We start going to church. We start praying. We start reading our Bible. And meanwhile, the storm is threatening everybody. Look at verse 6 as I wind down this message. So guess what? So the captain is looking for everybody, trying to find out who, who is missing here. They do a head count. <laughs> And they figure that this is, this is bad. This is, not, this is not right. Something is going on. So look at verse 6. It says, the captain of the ship went to him, Jonah, and asked, how can you sleep? What? How can you be asleep? Our house is burning. The ship is going down. We're going to die. Our finances have all been wiped out. Our children are really in danger and trouble. And you are sleeping? You, are, you don't care? You, you don't, you're not worried, you're not concerned, you're not trying to help. How can you sleep? Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will notice us and won't die. You see, this is a man of God, a prophet. Even at a time of trouble, he can pray. Why? Because what? His values are gone. Here's a pagan guy, a non-believer who's suggesting prayer to a supposedly man of God. He's gone backward. Let me give you verse 7. Still, Jonah isn't saying, I, th- I think we should just repent and call on God. I think it's my fault. Still, Jonah is like digging in his heels. So the captain of the ship went to him and uh, verse 7. Is, is verse 7 there? Did I put Jonah 1, 7 there? Okay, let me read that. It says, then the sailors said to each other, let's throw dice to find out who's responsible for bringing the disaster on us. So they threw dice and the dice indicated that Jonah was responsible. You know what this means? That God will protect you when you're doing what's right, but the protection of God is off when you're doing what's wrong. Because sometimes God will cause you to be found so you can change. Hello? You see, I'm doing something wrong and I'm praying for the protection of God. Don't count on the protection of God when you're doing something wrong because God doesn't want you to go down. Is it pretty clear to people? You say, well, God will protect me. God will protect me. God's protection. I need God's protection. Well, stop doing what's wrong, and God will protect you when you're on the path of rightness. Don't try. Don't try God's mercy. Don't try his grace. Hello? So verse 7 says, they're trying to find out who that is. Jonah is hiding, and guess what? They roll a dice, and the dice falls on Jonah. He says, oh, my gosh, I've been caught. Verse 8. Is verse 8 on there? So the captain says, what have you done to bring this awful storm upon us? What have you done? What if someone asks you that question, my brother, my sister? Are you even ready at that point to say, you know what? I've tried running from God. I've tried digging in my heels. I've tried doing it my own. Now I'm ready to change. What if your kids or your grandkids or your wife or your husband or your boss asks you the question, what is it that you're doing? The customers are complaining about you. Your, your, your work is not going right. Honey, what's wrong? This, this house, is there's no peace in this home. What is it that you're doing? What is it that will really, what is it that you want for things to change in this world? If somebody were to ask you that question, will that be a wake-up call for you? And oftentimes, God gets us to a place to get us to stop enough to lean in God's direction. Hello? And there will come a time that God will throw in that intervention. He will throw you a lifeline because he wants you to change your way. And that was the lifeline they were throwing Jonah. Jonah, why are you doing this? Why? Why are you doing this? Talk to us right now. What is going on? That things are getting so messed up for your life and us also. 
Lord comes to you and he says this to you. He says, hey, you know, I have a mission for your life. I created you as my masterpiece. You find your mission in life through my word. And so what's the lesson there? Lean in my word. Don't run away from God's word. Whatever God is speaking to you, have a heart to follow, to obey. Lord is speaking to you and he says, you know what, my mission is going to walk, take you through a path of faith. Step up in faith. Trust God. Believe God. Bank on God. Put your trust in Almighty God. And allow him to lead you. Don't stray from that. God will never lead you wrong. And so take a hold of his hand and walk with God, even through winding paths. Your life mission will be to help others. Be open to helping others. Let God soften your heart. God is looking for people to use as his ambassadors, as his extension to send mercy and compassion to others. You are blessed as you become a blessing to others. Does anyone believe that? Your life mission, my brother, my sister, will scare you at first. Don't run from God's open doors, God's opportunity, God's big dreams for your life. You get to a place in your life where it says, God, I just want to do what you want me to do. And whenever you are tempted to run from God, understand this, that whenever you are running from God, you're not going up, you're going where? Down, down, down. Run away from God, run towards God, and run to God at every stage in your life. When you fall, don't stay down. When your choices and your actions cause you to take away what not, no one is perfect, even the Pope is not perfect. Yes, there will be seasons of your life where you find yourself away from God. Run into the loving arms of God. He's ready, He's here to accept you. L let's learn from Jonah's experiences. Yes. We're going to find in coming weeks that yes, Jonah ran towards God. Jonah fulfilled his purpose. Jonah, one from a little village town, saw the big nation of Nineveh. Everybody gets saved. And Jonah realized that yes, there's a God. And today we can call the name of Jonah. Today we can call Jonah a guy from a little town. Why? Because he lived out his life mission. Look at this portion of scripture. Let's end on this note. So run towards God. And God says, I want to welcome you. My brother, put that last verse for us. It says, my arms are wide open. They are outstretched towards you. And I'm calling you. I'm calling you. Look at the Psalm 5, verse 11 to 12. It's on the screen. Read that. Read that as I wind this message. We're going to pray. It says, you, God, will welcome us with what? Open arms when we run for cover. To Does anyone believe that? Somebody today run to God. It says, God, I'm running to you. I need you now because I know that this is not the end of my life. How many of you believe that the, 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 the rest of your life, God's got something big, something majestic, something glorious done the former times in your life? You may have left more years behind you than is ahead of you, but what is left of you, God wants to make it far more quality, far more prominent, far more impactful than what is behind you. God says, my arms are open, run to me for cover. Spread your protection over them, God saying, that all who love your name may be filled with joy, for you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. Oh, wherever you are, whatever station of life you are, whatever situation you are into, God's life mission expands when you die. You are alive today because God is not finished with you. Say that to yourself. I'm alive today because God is not finished with me. There are still blessings in store for me. Still development in store for me. Still miracles that God wants to do in my life. Still opportunities that God wants me to walk right through and now I'm ready. So here's what you and I need to say. You need to say to God, God, anytime, any day, Anywhere, anywhere, anyhow, I'm ready to be used by you. God, I'm ready to be used by you. 
If somebody is there, we want to give God a clap of Why don't you put your hands together? Put your hands together for God. Put your hands together for God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. And let's rise. Let's rise. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. If anyone on the sound of my voice hasn't received Christ as your Savior, will you take this opportunity right now? He says, God, I'm coming to you. He says, I, I, you welcome you. Over 40 years ago, I gave my life to Christ. What a change is made in my life. God wants to do big things in your life. He did it for Jonah. No matter how you strayed away from God, God still, amen, he still loves you. So pray with me. Jesus, thank you for loving me enough to die for me. And so today, I give you my life. Like Jonah, I'm no longer running from you. I'm running towards you. So God, come and save me. Make my life your own. Lord, I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. You can do more with my life than I can. So from here on, take over. Every mistake, every pain, every wrong door, that I've walked into. Today, I run into your arms. Take my life. Use me for your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let me pray for you and then we'll bring our gifts to the Lord. Father, oh God, the word is life. We are your masterpiece. And so today, make your people your masterpiece. Everyone, oh God, my Lord, let them walk out of here, oh God. Anyone on the sound of my voice or will later listen to this message. Activate the virtues, the blessing, the giftedness, the divine habits, the personalities, Lord God Almighty. That you placed in them, Jesus, to accomplish your good purposes. Activate that today in the name of Jesus. You can do more with lives than anyone can. And so today, come in your strength and your power. And overwhelm the life of your people in Jesus' name. Oh God, break your people loose today, Lord God Almighty. Tear down walls that are standing in your way. Father, today, Lord God Almighty, activate your blessing over their life. Activate your power over their life, Lord God Almighty. Do great and awesome things that by themselves they cannot do. You take them places for your glory. You can do all things, Lord God. The Lord bless your people right now. Elevate them, O oh God, to a higher ground. Jesus, where there's weakness, bring strength. Sickness, bring healing. Where there are hardships of any form, spiritually, financially, relationally, vocationally, generationally, shatter them today by your mighty power, O oh God, my Lord. Lead your people into their specific divine mission. In Jesus' name, let this season, as we are looking at the book of Jonah, Living out our fulfilled mission. Manifest your mission over the life of your people in the name of Jesus. And bring them forth with great power. We love you, God Almighty. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen.